Ooh, that transition again. Yeah. I'm like that. Uh, I woke up early and started cleaning the shop. My welcome party the night before had gotten a little too wild, and we forgot to clean up afterwards. Ah, that should be enough. Just then, the face of a shy young blonde girl peeked in. Uh, morning, Emily. M morning. As Emily walked out, her eyes darted about nervously as if she were checking for hidden enemies. Did you sleep okay? Yeah. What's up? So, um... I'm so sorry about yesterday. Uh, thank you. Emily bowed deeply, apologizing and thanking me at the same time. You were being so kind to me, but I... I get shy around strangers and just forgot my manners. Oh, don't worry about it. I'm the one who should apologize. It was my fault she'd fallen into the water. Hopefully this didn't make her hate the ocean even more. But, but you were just trying to help. She insisted, her voice becoming nasally and breathing labored. I thought about it uh, a lot after going to bed last night. Sinking into the pitch black water was so scary. I was certain I would die. But then you squeezed my hand and helped me. Did I? Huh. I was so panicked I barely remember. Of course I remember trying to save her, but in hindsight jumping into the ocean at night like that was a terrible idea. I was panicking too, so I don't remember very well either. But even in those dark, cold waters, I could feel the warmth from your body. It made me feel safe. When I think about it now, I'm so happy, and I... And we looked down, unable to find the right words to express her gratitude for what she had felt. As I watched her, I couldn't help but laugh. What's so funny? Nothing. It's nothing at all. Hmm? She put on a strong front, but deep down she was kind and sincere. At least that's what I thought. I knew better than to say it, so I kept my mouth shut. Uh, how about breakfast? Huh? Oh, sure. Okay, then. Have a seat. I got Emily seated and went to whip up a simple breakfast in the cafe's kitchen. So, do you like your eggs scrambled or sunny side up? Uh, sunny, please. You got it. Our quick breakfast included bacon, eggs, toast, and coffee. As this was a cafe, we always had good coffee beans on hand. Though we had a mean grilled fish set as well. What? Okay. And I whipped up a salad with vegetables left over from the party. Breakfast is served. This looks good. I never would have guessed. Yeah, I'm pretty handy in the kitchen. I bragged just a bit as I sat down in front of my own plate. Let's eat. Let's eat. We both fell silent as we enjoyed our meals. Emily seemed to have her reason for coming to the island. And I was really curious about the treasure on this ghost ship she mentioned. But I wasn't going to push her if she didn't want to talk about it. More than curious, that would just be downright nosy. As I searched for a topic of conversation, I could see Emily glancing over as if she wanted to ask something. Hmm. Yes? So, so, you... Never mind, it's nothing. She stuffed the question back down, along with some bacon and eggs. She was eating much too fast to actually taste anything. Yeah, well, now I have to know. I was just wondering why you're so nice. You must want something in return. Something in return? Well, you're not wrong. Oh, I went in on the sunken treasure. Emily looked troubled. It's not really something you can share. I grinned. No, no. I want you to let me join the search. You want to help look? 
What can I say? I'm a sucker for adventure. Runs in the family. Uh, you're headed out after breakfast, right? Headed out? Emily stared blankly. You know, out to find the ghost ship. Hey, Chisa! Morning! After breakfast, I took Emily with me to meet Chisa. Morning to you, blonde girl. Uh, good morning. Chisa stared at Emily as the latter fidgeted and avoided eye contact. Chisa didn't seem to care much for her. And I was caught in the middle. It was not a pleasant place to be. I thought Chisa would be the best person to help us with the ghost ship hunt. If she doesn't mind... Certainly, can't have an impulsive runaway running around the island unsupervised. Yeah, that's what she told me, too. Also, hunting for ghost ships sounds fun. I can't let you tourists have all the fun. Fun? I see. So, what do you say? Well, if you absolutely insist she can join us... No one said anything about insisting. Now, now. Anyway, where should we start? We gotta gather intel, of course. If we're searching the bottom of the sea, we can't just go in blind. Jesus started walking. A doubtful Emily and I followed after her. Chisa led us to a diving shop on the outskirts of town. Hmm, I see. Chisa asked the shop staff and local guides dropping by about the whereabouts of the ghost ship. Emily watched from a distance as they talked over a map, her expression worried. Is it really okay to use the shop like this? We're not even buying anything. It's probably fine. It is Chisa's family's shop, after all. What? Emily took another look around the shop. It was filled with diving suits and equipment. The Ogasawara Islands were famous for diving. This was just one of many similar shops on the islands. I see, uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Chisa walked back over to us. Uh, how does it go? Sounds like the last sighting was at least three years ago. It vanished after one of the big typhoons. Can a shipwreck get washed away? Well, sometimes storms can move them, but usually they just fall apart. Salt in the seawater can lead to corrosion, causing the ships to get really brittle, so if a strong storm hits, they just crumble. You don't think it's really a ghost ship? Do you? Eh. What's with that grin? Oh, are you scared? I I'm not scared. I don't even believe in ghosts. <laughs> oh, you've got some nerve. Well, Ogoswara does have a lot of ghost stories, seeing as it was the site of several attacks during the war. But really? But I I'm totally not scared. Emily didn't seem to realize it, but she was gripping the hem of my shirt, clearly shaken. Don't worry, though. It's only called a ghost ship because it gets blown all over the islands during the storm. With that, Chisa grabbed my arm and pulled me away from Emily, forcing her hand to let go of my shirt. So, where was the last sighting? Chisa opened the map. Somewhere around here. Uh, that's pretty close. We just had a boat. Oh my, well isn't this just a pleasant sight to behold? Chinami was spying on us from between the wetsuits hanging in the back of the shop. Morning, Chinami. Good morning, Hero. And to you too, blonde girl. G good morning. Chinami st stared at Emily. Uh, is there something on my face? 
Oh no, it's nothing. I was just thinking about how beautiful you look. It would appear that you have a powerful new adversary, dear sister. Ow! Chisa grabbed Shinami by the scruff of her neck. Unhand me, dear sister. How about you keep that nonsense to yourself? Besides, who asked you anyway? Release me. I am merely starved for entertainment on this dull little island. Chisa led the struggling Shinami to the back of the shop. Oh, beautiful blonde eyed girl, I am ever your ally. Thank you. Is that girl alright? Uh, she's definitely different, but she's shy like you, so maybe she felt some kind of kinship. Well, I'm not different, I'm just shy. I didn't mean any disrespect. Anyway, she's a good girl, so don't mind her. Okay then, if you say so. <sighs> she came back and stared at Emily and I. I, I don't mean to interrupt. Ah. She bumped Emily out of the way and stood next to me. <gasps> well, should we hit the road? Hmm? I sense a great disturbance. Yeah, Chinami knows what's up. Chisa and I took Emily to Umura Beach. Amongst all the visitors to the beach, we were the only ones not in swimsuits standing on the edge of the water. We're not going to swim from here, right? Emily had gone stiff. I doubt it. Oh, there he is! Hey! Chisa started signaling out toward the water. A small boat-like object could be seen coming in from the open sea. Ahoy! Roto was paddling toward us. Chisa and I waded out to meet him and pulled the boat up to the sand. So, this is your boat, huh, Rio? Yep. It's so strange looking, like some kind of canoe? That's because it is a canoe! Chisa added frankly. But it was much larger than your average canoe. On the beach sat a canoe with long arms stretched out on either side of the hull like the legs of a water bug. It's a double outrigger canoe, plus I got it customized. An outrigger? That's what the arms to either side are called. They keep the canoe stable and less likely to capsize. It's even got an outboard motor. Ah, oh, so it does. Uh, just like a motorboat. Canoes were almost always paddled by hand, but this one had an engine. I assume that's what Ryota meant by customized. Ryo, what do you even do with this thing? I bought it to go fishing, but I got tired of paddling out to sea, so I put a motor on it. But lately I've been so busy helping out at home, I don't have the time to take it fishing. Red had been helping out at the family business ever since he graduated high school. So, you guys are free to use it. Chisa, you know uh, how it works, right? Yep, I just got my second class license. Chisa's house was, as we'd seen before, a diving shop. They not only rented out equipment, but also offered scuba diving courses and dive trips. And to take guests out to the diving spots, they needed to run motorboats. Chisa was only 16, but she had gotten a small boat license to help with the family business. Okay, all aboard. Um, is this thing really safe? Oh, thanks, Ryu. No problem. Be careful. If you find any treasure, don't forget my share. All three of us climbed into the canoe and headed out to sea. Onwards to adventure. Of a lifetime. Ooh. An outrigger canoe rides closer to the water than most boats. 
Because there was so little resistance with the surface, it had the But even so... Uh, is this canoe safe? Emily was crouched low in the canoe, holding onto the edge of the hull for dear life. We already told you, it's safe! But, but uh... The boat swayed as it rode over a small wave, and Emily let out a scream as she almost fell overboard. Here we go. I said as I quickly offered her a hand. So thank you. I wasn't surprised by her anxiety. It was her first time on a boat this small, after all. Emily squeezed my hand tightly and, I, and didn't seem likely to let go. This action seemed to be completely subconscious, so I just let her be. And you seemed so strong and sure of yourself back on land. Emily started sulking as I teased her. The sea's different. Back on solid ground, I'm not afraid of anything. You were well. Uh, you were white as a sheet when we mentioned ghosts. Speaking of, uh, why do you hate the sea so much? Because the sea has sharks. Emily whispered as she lost all color. A long time ago, I saw the scary shark movie, and every time I look at the sea, I think of that movie. Oh, that really famous one? Well, yeah, that one was pretty scary. For a while there, even I was pretty nervous every time I went to the beach. Right? When all those sharks go up in the tornado? That one? So not Jaws, then. Huh? What are you talking about? Why would sharks be in a tornado? Yeah, that one isn't quite what you'd call famous. Maybe more so infamous. It was a rather inf yeah, infamous B-movie. These days, sharks were second only to zombies in the B-movie hierarchy. These days, sharks were turning into robots or zombies were going to space. I get sharks being scared, but how could that movie make you scared of the whole ocean? It's not just that. The sea is so dark, you can't see the bottom. Plus, it has that funny smell. Cheese and I looked at each other. Just what sea is she talking about? Anyway, uh, where are we now? Um, let's see. Tisa checked our location on the map. Just a little ways to go now. Looking around, I realized we were pretty far from land. And when Emily noticed, she almost burst into tears. Hey, uh, is this tiny boat really safe so far out to sea? What if we can't make it back? Are you absolutely certain this is safe? We're totally fine. My ancestors crossed the Pacific in a boat like this. What do you mean? You don't know? Polynesians used canoes to cross the Pacific all the way to Japan and Hawaii. It sounded hard to believe, but it was true. People had crossed the ocean in canoes. And uh, naturally, this was before engines. Not that. The part about your ancestors. Oh, that part. Uh, I guess a few generations back, people migrated here from the Hawaiian Islands. They married Japanese people, had kids, then the kids got married, so on and so forth, and now here I am. Originally, the Ogasawara Islands were uninhabited, but people from all over just ended up here and started living together. There are even people with Western ancestry, just like you. Oh, really? You're of mixed heritage, right? Yeah, Papa's Japanese and Mama's American, but uh, Mama's family is from somewhere in Northern Europe. I guess you and Chisa both come from people that crossed the sea. Many years ago, before computers helped with navigation, people risked their lives during the sea voyages. Quite the adventure. And two descendants of those adventurers were here now. But these two were nothing compared to my grandpa, especially when it came to crossing the seas. Outrigger canoes are used for fishing, so they can carry a lot of weight without tipping over. They're really stable. So you can lay off Hero's hand. 
Ah. When Chisa pointed it out, Emily turned bright red and let go of my hand. If you get scared again, a cute girl like you is always free to take my hand. Oh. Whack. Ow! <laughs> Don't get too cocky. Chisa attacked me with the paddle. Even if she wasn't being serious, I'd appreciate it if she didn't use a weapon. Jeez, but you two are all over each other at home, huh? Right, uh, aren't you? Not at all. Yeah. Well, why not? Uh, Emily suddenly looked embarrassed. Well, for one, Emily sleeps on the second floor. Uh, okay. And that stubborn old granny has insisted that I sleep on the floor in the cafe on the first floor. Sorry about that, Hero. Uh, don't worry about it, it's not your fault. Besides, staying at the shop is kind of what I wanted anyway. Huh? Hmm, well, okay then. What was that supposed to mean? By the way, outrigger canoes can only sail on calm waters. Calm? Like the sea is now, with very few waves. The sea around Ogoswara are really calm during the summer, but before that it's really rough. Huh. Emily seemed to relax as we talked, and Chisa continued guiding the canoe on toward our destination. It should be around here somewhere. She stopped the motor, then bent over to thrust her face into the water to have a look around. Hmm, I don't see it. Are you sure this is the spot? Yeah, see that big boulder over there? She poured it down into the water. But it was so deep I couldn't see anything. They said it all got it got caught around here. There were a lot of strange rock formations on the seabed, so it was a popular spot for divers. The ship was last seen here three years ago, right before a typhoon hit. There was no reason to believe it would still be here. But then Jesus suddenly started undressing. Here, Chisa gave her clothes to Emily. She was wearing a swimsuit underneath. Huh? What are you doing? I'm going to take a look. And with that, Chisa jumped into the water. Ah. Uh, is she okay? It's so deep down there. She could drown. She's in her element. Before long, we lost sight of Chisa as she disappeared into the darker depths of the sea. We sat in the canoe, a silence overwhelming now that the engine had stopped. Uh, what should we do if she doesn't come back? I don't have a boat license, and I have no idea how to start this thing. Emma was on the verge of tears as she started to shake her head. No, I won't. I don't want to die like this. But hey, I'm just messing with you. We've got paddles, so if we work together, we could get back to land. It's just right over there, right over there. And here I thought you were a nice guy. Turns out you're just a big bully. Anyway, there's no way Jesus would drown in water this calm. Just as, just as I said this, Jesus' head popped out of the water. Phew! Uh, how'd it go? Jesus shook her head. No sign of it down here, th there. I see. Hmm. I do have some good news for the little lady, though. I couldn't find any sign of hull debris, so it appears the ship is still hull, at least. So that means it must still be out there somewhere. Well, there's a chance. A small one. Uh, Haruki, lend me a hand. I took Jesus' hand and pulled her up. But then... Eek! A strangled noise escaped from Emily's lips. And she started smacking my shoulder. Ow, 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 what is your problem? Sh shark, shark! She pointed frantically toward the f a fin cutting through the waves, moving closer to us. 
If you don't get out, get Chase out of the water, it'll eat her alive! What? The fin came rushing up toward us just when we thought it would hit the canoe. He cried as he leapt from the water. And then... Splash. Ah! Oof. Ah. Finn the dolphin came down sideways, sending a huge wave of water crashing over us. Ah, you stupid dolphin! <laughs> Finn seemed pleased with the success of his prank. He really was a brat. Then, with a little push from Finn, Chisa boarded the canoe. Thanks, Finn! Chisa petted the tip of the, his nose, much to Finn's delight. Emily slumped back in relief, though she kept a wary eye on Finn. Is that, do is that the dolphin from before? Yep, our lifesaver. Oh, why don't you try petting him too, Emily? Me? I said your name, didn't I? Yeah. Emily fearfully reached out her hand as Finn moved toward her. Oh, well, aren't you sweet? Here, boy. Without warning, Finn quickly dodged the outstretched hand and... Splash. Ah! Finn used his pectoral fin to splash water in Emily's face. Finn took off, squeaking maniacally. Emily, are you okay? Uh, he's not sweet at all. I hate everything in the sea. Clearly, Finn only increased Emily's distaste for the sea. Should we start heading back? I'm starving. I looked at my watch and realized it was way past lunchtime. Sure, but can we make a quick, pick, a quick pit stop first? Where to? My part-time job. It'll just be a sec. She just started up the motor. Okay, here we go. Finn, you come too. <laughs> the outrigger canoe began to glide over the calm sea once more. After 15 minutes or so, Chisa cut the engine. This is where you work? Yep, though it's actually below the surface. A boat was anchored nearby, apparently a transport for divers. When you look down into the rather shallow water, we could see divers swimming about below. They had noticed Finn swimming with us and started pointing and taking photos. I'll be right back. Chisa casually jumped back into the sea. What kind of part-time job could she have out here? Beats me. I had no idea. Probably something to do with diving, though. It's not like she was out catching sea urchins or shrimp, right? Perhaps she was a guide for the divers. Oh, what's that? Hmm? That over there. That red thing. Oh. Chisa was swimming toward a red mailbox set up on the sea floor. Finn was swimming behind her playfully. Come on, stop messing around. <laughs> Finn wanted to play, and it didn't look like he would back off until she joined him. And so they began swimming around playfully under the water. It became an impromptu dolphin show. A single girl and dolphin swam through the sun-bathed waters, the aquatic dance creating a magical atmosphere. The divers swimming nearby started to gather to watch the show. Finn blew out a large ring of bubbles. Here we go. Chisa swam through the center of the ring. <laughs> this time he blew out three rings, and when Chisa swam through, he followed after her. Amazing! Chisa looks more alive here than she ever does on land. Yeah. Eventually, Chisa continued on her way to the mailbox. Once there, she unlocked it and pulled out a net. Chisa's part-time job was collecting mail from the mailbox on the sea floor. See ya! 
Chase a wave to the divers, then return to the surface. <sighs> I'm back! Wow, that's some lung power. Oh, yeah. I could have kept going for a while longer. Smiling brightly, Chisa set the nets from the mailbox on the floor of the canoe. It contained plastic wrapped letters sent out by divers. Since when is there an underwater mailbox? It's for the tourists. I collect the letters and take them to the post office. So it was a new service. Well. Um, Emily, uh, what's wrong? Emily stared at Chisa, clearly mesmerized. N nothing, nothing at all. Hmm. I whispered into Chisa's ear. I think you just got yourself a new fan. Lies, she totally hates the sea. I helped the disbelieving Chisa up in and into the canoe. Whoop, let's head back. With a final wave to the divers, we began our journey back to the island. Damn it. I can't take it anymore. I want to go diving. I cried as we sat down on a Maru beach to eat the food we had just picked up from the supermarket. What is your problem? You're having all the fun. I want to go diving too. Then why don't you just do it? Chisa said bluntly as she bit into her, uh, her cream-filled pastry. It's so hot, I can't even eat. Emma complained as she ate a rice ball, even though it had been her idea to eat outside. But I continued my diving tirade. But I need equipment, plus I can't go alone. You know there's a buddy system. The buddy system was important in scuba diving. When you went diving, you needed a buddy, also known as a partner. It was part of a safety system put in place for divers, starting from prep and ending when you both made it back to the surface. It was no exaggeration to call it a diving oath. I'll pass. Scuba's too constricting for me. That's rich coming from a scuba shop's daughter. What? What about you, Emily? You came looking for a ghost ship, so you must at least have a diver certifi certifi certification card, right? Emily quickly shook her head. No way! Why would I? I hate to see. What the? Well, how do you plan on getting your treasure from the bottom of the sea? Easy. Japanese law doesn't require any certification certification to go scuba diving. Emily's blind arrogance got to the diving shop's door. You idiot! How can you sit here and talk about how much you hate the sea, yet claim that diving is easy? Well, I mean, I can't swim as well as you, so it might be tough. But I'll have, like, an oxygen tank and stuff so I can breathe, right? Piece of cake! <laughs> Seriously? Chisa had sat up during her outburst, but sank back into the sand, tired from the entire exchange. Well, you're not the first to think so. We get customers like you all the time. Anyway, what about equipment? Oh, come now, you can just rent that stuff at a shop. I mean, that's what you guys do, right? Fine then. Uh, let's see you give it a try. Emily flinched under Chisa's fierce gaze. Uh, um, sure, okay, uh, let's try it. Why can't I? We had taken Emily to the Agosawara family diving shop to rent some equipment. But as expected, Emily was refused, and now she was throwing a tantrum. I told you, I've got the money! If anything happens, I'll take full responsibility. Okay, okay, that's enough. Chisa apologized to the shop clerk and pulled Emily away. Do you understand now? You can't rent anything without a cert. Otherwise, we could all get in trouble. But that's why I said I'd take full responsibility. An accident could hurt the whole industry. Plus, if we rented equipment to an amateur like you, our shop's rep could be shot. Ugh. You really are a reckless little runaway. 
For what it's worth, it only takes two days to get a beginner's license. I don't have the time for that. Emma would already be on her way back by then. She only had two more days in Nogusma, including today. Ah. Oh, well, I guess, uh... I guess, uh, this dull sh treasure thing's a no-go, then. Oh, well. <sighs> After we left the shop, Emily was silent, clearly upset with the turn of events. Chiesel was watching her from behind, unable to control her irritation as a proud resident of Ogusawara. Running around, causing a fuss, thinking you can't find a ghost ship when you can't even dive? Just what in the world brought you to this island? Chisa. I chided Chisa for going too far. But she just looked away, her expression adamant that she wasn't in the wrong. And then Emily suddenly blurted out. I hate the sea, it's dark, it's scary, and fish taste terrible. I'll never forgive you. Huh? Fish taste terrible? I can't believe how ignorant you are of the blessings of the sea. What? Hiroki, are you okay? Your eyes are looking a, a little strange. I'll show you. I'll show you the true gloriousness that is delicious fish. Munch, munch, munch. Hmm. We were at Michiko's cafe to have the seasonal fish platter for dinner, and after we took a bite, her eyes went wide. She took a second mouthful, then a third, before she became unstoppable. I can't believe how good this is, and it's not even meat! <laughs> Told ya. And you made this one, uh, Hiroki? She just said, unable to hide her disbelief as she ate. Yep. I was feeling quite self-satisfied. But Grandma watched from the corner more than disgruntled. That dish is strictly for the staff in the back. Pachiko's Cafe opened in the evening. Even so, the food was quite good, so we were always busy. And even though Grandma's legs were getting worse, she refused to ask for help. So I took it upon myself to play waiter, anyway. The flesh platter I served Emily was made using her recipe. Wow, look at you, Hiroki. It's so good. And you made me breakfast this morning. You really are a good cook, Hiro. Like a pro. Not just like a pro, that's just what he wants to become, right? Oh, really? Yeah. When I put on the apron, I felt whole. It was more than just a uniform for me. After I graduate, I want to go to culinary school. Wow! But my parents are totally against it. They want me to go to a regular university. I'm against it too, particularly that nonsense about taking over this shop. Honestly, I was expecting more support from you. It's your grandchild that wants to carry on your legacy! It's an unwelcome favor. Michiko's Cafe belongs to me. I have no intention of giving it to anyone. <sighs> Stubborn old booty. Snot nosed brat. <sighs> Emma's expression was dark as she listened to the warm exchange between grandmother and grandson. What's wrong, Emily? I bet the fish was too delicious for her. We still have grilled fish. Sashimi, Pele, she'll never have time to try it all. But Emily just shook her head. Once I realized she hadn't been overwhelmed by the deliciousness of the food, I became nervous. It's about the certification, isn't it? Oh, you didn't like it? I really am useless, huh? Emily curled in on herself, sinking so low into her chair that her hair almost touched the ground. I thought you were just an airhead, but you've actually got a dream. Wait, you really thought that? And even though Chisa is some wild 
nature child. People really depend on her. Who are you calling a wild nature child? And then there's me, just running around in circles. I don't even know who I am. What? Thank you for the food. And we said as she finished up her meal and set her chopsticks aside. Mm -hmm. She left the table and headed to her room. Good night. I wonder what she's so down about. Who knows? She certainly got plenty of pride. Hmm. Once the evening rush was over, I left the shop to walk Chase home. You know, you don't have to. It's no big deal. Compared to the city center, this area was quite safe. Most people didn't even lock their doors. It was a tiny island, so if someone did commit a crime, they'd have to wait for the next ferry to get away. Well, aren't you a nice guy? I told you, this is nothing. Not to me. To her. Ah, well... It's my fault she got stuck on the, the islands. I couldn't tell if Chisa was listening or not as she stared at me with a blank expression. Anyway, anyway, it's been fun, thanks to her. What has... Looking for the ghost ship. I would first come to Okasawara when I was in third grade. After that, I would come to spend every summer here. One day, while playing around the cafe, I met a girl the same age as me. We spent our days exploring, becoming close friends. Once I started junior high, though, summer club activities kept me away. We went a long time without seeing each other. I never dreamed there'd be this kind of adventure waiting after so many years away. <laughs> I'll never understand why you like the seas around these islands so much. You're one to talk. Something special to me. Really, I was just born here. She seemed overly apathetic. I wondered if she was upset about something. Speaking of this ghost ship, remember that time I got caught in a current and nearly became a ghost myself? Jisa? Hmm. How long are you going to keep acting like a child? I guess you only look grown up. You're one to talk about looking grown up. <laughs> Chisa stopped short and hastily zipped up her sweater, hiding her chest. Haruki, you're such a perv. That's not what I meant. Yeah. Chisa stuck out her tongue, then spun around and started running. What is with her? I blurted out as I watched her run home. I had thought that she was the same girl inside, despite how she looked now. Maybe I was wrong. The thought of my childhood friend truly growing up saddened me. 